that right there, folks, is why you don't leave your earplugs back at home. But that right there is also why I think this rifle right here is one of the best rifles you can buy for the money. This is the CVA Cascade. The reason why I went with the CVA Cascade versus some other rifles around the $600 price point is because when you compare what the CVA Cascade gives you to like a $1,200 or even a $1,500 rifle, the CVA Cascade is pretty much neck and neck with some of those $1,200 or $1,500 rifles. So the CVA Cascade gives you the same features that a lot of $1,500 rifles will give you at nearly half the cost or sometimes even more than half the cost depending on which rifle you're looking at. That is exactly why I had to go and buy myself a CVA Cascade and I just had to have it in my closet. So yes, this is not a sponsored video. CVA did not send me this rifle. I bought this rifle with my own money and again, it's a $600 rifle and for anybody who is just getting into hunting, this is my recommendation. The CVA Cascade bolt action hunting rifle for $600. I don't think you can beat the CVA Cascade for the price when you look at what the CVA Cascade has to offer you. This rifle that I have is chambered in 308 Winchester. The reason why I went with 308 Winchester is because again, this video is to cater to those who are looking to get into hunting. And so I think the 308 Winchester is one of the best cartridges overall for new hunters. Ammo is readily available almost anywhere you look. You have a lot of different options. There's a lot of different ammo manufacturers that are loading for 308 so you can get a lot of different variety when it comes to finding ammo. The other thing is 308 is a relatively mild kicking cartridge so for new shooters not having a magnum rifle will allow you to spend more time at the range and get more practice in. That's why I went with the 308 Winchester. On top of that, the 308 Winchester is just a very capable cartridge. It'll take down anything from pronghorn antelope all the way to moose. Granted, for most people who are hunting the western states, elk is about the biggest animal that you can readily hunt every single year. Of course, you might get lucky and draw a once in a lifetime tag for moose, but that's that's its own little category. I just want to focus on the big game animals that you can hunt pretty much every year out west, which is elk. On top of my rifle, I have the Vortex Viper HS 4016x44 rifle scope. This has the BDC reticle in it. And honestly, just like the rifle itself, I think that this Viper HS from Vortex is one of the best scopes for the money. You pair the CVA Cascade with the Vortex Viper HS like I have here and you just have a solid bolt action hunting rifle that will take care of you as long as you take care of it and it'll handle anything from pronghorn antelope all the way up to elk and even moose if you draw that once in a lifetime moose tag. So with that said, I want to walk you through why I think the CVA Cascade is such a great value rifle. If you just feel the stock of the rifle, the stock is just burly and it's rugged and it's tough. It's not flimsy and weak like some of the other rifles around its price point. And so the stock, when you feel it, it just feels like a good stock. The second thing is this rifle comes with a two-piece Picatinny rail mount, meaning you don't have to go and buy an aftermarket Picatinny rail mount to put onto your rifle, which saves you a little bit of money there. The third thing is that this rifle comes threaded. 5 8 by 24 so that if you want to put a suppressor on it or you want to put a muzzle brake on it this rifle is already threaded and ready to go you don't have to do any aftermarket threading to your barrel fourth this rifle has a two and a half pound trigger right out of the box that is better than my browning x bolts which are like twelve hundred dollars where their factory standard is like four pounds number five the bolt is silky smooth and you don't have a super high clearance. I believe it's like a 60 degree bolt throw versus your standard 90 degree bolt throw like my Savage 110 Ultralight. And so you have a lot of clearance for your bolt to clear the scope and not hit your scope. Number six, the feeding is flawless. This rifle, again, it's a $600 rifle. It feeds better than my $1,500 Savage 110 Ultralight rifle 
and it even feeds a little bit better than my custom 7 PRC, which costs like $4,500. And so when you look at these six things that I just covered about the CVA Cascade and you compare it to the $600 price point that you're paying for, it's one heck of a rifle. Now I want to walk you through how I set up my rifle. The first thing I did was I put my rifle in a gun vise to avoid my rifle from being loose and flopping all over the place. Second thing is I leveled my rifle. I put a bubble level on the Picatinny rail mount because that's a very level spot on the rifle. And once I got that bubble level leveled i attached a different leveler to my barrel and i simply aligned those two bubble levels together once i have the barrel level clamped i can remove the one on my picatinny rail mount and i can use that clamp on the barrel as my future reference as i'm setting up my rifle once i have my leveler set i went ahead and i detached the two picatinny rail mounts on my rifle you don't have to remove them but it's just the fact that when it comes factory, sometimes there's errors from the manufacturer. So I want to know that my Picatinny base is set according to specs and they're all even. So I reattached my Picatinny rail mounts. I torqued them to about 25 pounds, inch pounds with my torque wrench. From there, I attached my Vortex Pro Series rings. These are the 30 millimeter rings and these are the low height. Whenever you buy a scope, you always want to make sure that your rings match your scope. If you have a 30 millimeter main tube like my Vortex Viper HS, make sure that you buy scope rings that are designed for 30 millimeter tubes. If you have like a one inch tube, your rings have to be a one inch tube. But again, because my Vortex Viper HS is a 30 millimeter main tube, my rings are 30 millimeters. From there, I put my scope on the bottom of the rings and I went ahead and checked for eye relief. Eye relief is the distance that your eye has to be from the rear end of your scope so that when you look through your scope, you can achieve a full and clear picture. There shouldn't be any of that black stuff around your crosshairs. Once I have achieved proper eye relief, I went ahead and set my torque wrench to 30 inch pounds and I torqued the bottom of my rings. From there, I took off my scope and I attached my bubble level. This bubble level is the Vortex Low Pro bubble level. And once again, because my scope has a 30 millimeter main tube, I needed to make sure that my Vortex Low Pro bubble level was also designed for a 30 millimeter main tube. So from there, I simply attached my Low Pro bubble level to the main tube of the scope. And from there, I haven't leveled my bubble level yet, but I just needed to put it on there for now because it's easier to install before your scope is permanently attached to your rifle. After that, I put my scope on the bottom pieces of the rings and I just temporarily placed the top pieces of the rings to its correlating bottom piece. And from there, it's all about leveling your scope to your rifle. So at the beginning, we already leveled our rifle. So what I did now is I simply took a bubble level and I placed it on top of my elevation turret. Once I have that bubble level placed on top of the elevation turret, it's all about adjusting my scope so that the bubble level is aligned with the one on my barrel go ahead and start torquing down the top of your rings. And for the top of my rings, I set my torque wrench to 13 inch pounds. And for every single screw, I put Loctite blue on it so that I don't have to worry about my screws retracting on the future. Now, one little caveat that I wanna bring up is when it comes to setting up your rifle, putting the bubble level on top of your scope is not the most accurate or the best way to go about it. But for what I'm trying to do with this rifle, which is shoot 350 yards max, it'll do the job. Once you have your scope torqued down to specs with the rings and it's on your rifle permanently, now the last thing we have to do is we have to level the actual bubble level that is attached to your main tube of your scope. Again, referring to the bubble level on your barrel, just twist and rotate that bubble level on your scope until it matches the one on your barrel and go ahead and just uh, torque that one down until they match. That right there is the process of how I set up my CVA Cascade chambered 308. Now it's all about shooting. So the first thing I did after I set up my rifle is I went to go sight in my rifle or at least somewhat sight in my rifle because we're not necessarily at the sight in process where you're going to be ready to hunt. So I took some cheap FMJ or full metal jacket bullets and I just started shooting and eventually I got my point of impact to be somewhat close to my point of aim on my crosshairs. And from there, 
I started what is called the barrel break-in process. Now when it comes to breaking in a barrel, if you ask 10 different people how to break in a barrel, there's a good chance you would get 10 different answers. For this particular rifle, I just went with the standard, what I deem is the standard break-in process for your barrel. I would shoot one bullet, I would clean my barrel, I would shoot two bullets, clean my barrel, shoot three times, clean my barrel, shoot four times, clean my barrel, shoot five times, clean my barrel, and I would do that all the way up to the 10th rotation. And again, for my barrel break-in process, I was just shooting some cheap full metal jacket bullets. Don't use your box of $80 ammo to do your barrel break-in process, unless you really got money to spare. Once we have broken in our barrel, this is when we actually start testing out different loads to see which shoots out of my rifle the best. So for this particular project, I picked up five different boxes of ammo. And once again, this is why I opted for the 308 Winchester because we just came off of a huge ammo shortage. And frankly, we're still partially in an ammo shortage. You can't find ammo for every single cartridge out there. And so that's why I opted for the 308 because ammo is just readily available and you can find it almost anywhere. And so what I ended up doing for this rifle is I ended up buying five different boxes of hunting grade ammunition and I shot them all at a hundred yards to see which one group out of my rifle best. So these five boxes of factory ammunition is what I tested out of my CVA Cascade. All of them are shooting 150 grain projectiles because personally for me, for the 308, I think 150 grain projectiles is the way to go. There's nothing wrong with other options. That's just what I like. So we tested the Remington Core Lock Tip the Barnes TTSX, the Hornady American Whitetail, Nosler Acubon, and Nosler E-Tip. Out of these five, I ended up going with the Barnes TTSX. First load, the Remington Corlock Tip, which is this little beast right here. The reason why this did not make the cut is because at 100 yards, a three shot group, the Remington Corlock shot a 1.74 inch group, which is not good. That's over one MOA. So this little beast right here, we knocked him out. We are not shooting the Remington core lock tipped. Second, we go down to the Nosler E-tips. Once again, we shot a three shot group, which is this right here, one, two, three. The reason why the E-tips did not make the cut is because they shot worse than the Remington core lock, shooting a 1.92 inch three shot group at 100 yards. Again, shooting over one MOA, we don't want anything to do with that. So the Nosler E-tips are knocked out. Third, we move over to the Nosler Acubon, and finally, we have some sub MOA groups. So again, three shot group at 100 yards. This is the 150 grain Nosler Acubon. It shot a 0.96 inch group at 100 yards. So it's definitely very capable, but it just was not the best shooting out of the CVA Cascade. So we're knocking the Nosler Acubon out. Number four, we go to the Hornady American Whitetail, and I will be honest, I am super, super impressed with the, how the Hornady American Whitetails are shooting because my buddy Nate shoots the same ones out of his 308, or at least he used to, and he has um, amazing results with them as well. So this is not a fluke. So this is like a $25 box of ammo compared to like $80 Nosler Acubons. And it is shooting at 100 yards, a three shot group is shooting a 0.83 inch group. So this is the group right here, which is very impressive. But even though it's shooting sub MOA and it's shooting fantastic, especially for the price point, it's still not the winner. Last but not least, we have the winner for the CVA Cascade and it is the Barnes 150 grain TTSX. And at 100 yards, a three shot group, the Barnes TTSX shot a 0.67 inch group, which I mean, that is just phenomenal. $600 rifle, factory ammunition, and it's shooting a 0.67 inch group at 100 yards. That right there is the clear winner. And again, it's a little bit more expensive than the American Whitetail but we're just going after whichever one shoots the tightest. And so the TTSX it is, even though I would have not mind shooting the American Whitetail. 
After my grouping process and learning that the TTSX is the tightest shooting out of my 308, I went ahead and zeroed it at 100 yards. I ran out of the little red dots on my paper target, so I just shot for this thick black bar where it meets up with the little guy. And I'll be honest, I think that's a zeroed rifle right there. So again, I shot a three shot group and this zero group right here actually ended up being tighter than when I was testing out all of the other loads. And for my zero group at 100 yards with the 150 grain TTSX, it shot a 0.445 inch group at 100 yards. So I think my rifle is dialed for zero. Now it's all about stretching it out. So I went to my local range and my local range has targets from 100 yards out all the way to 1,000 yards. But again, with this rifle setup, for hunting purposes, 350 yards max, maybe 400 yards if the perfect condition is in play on a deer or an elk. So 100 yards, we've already zeroed my rifle, but I shot one time at 100 yards and right in the bullseye, it went. We went over to 200 yards and according to my dope chart for my rifle, it's a 1.25 MOA elevation adjustment. So I dialed up my scope 1.25 MOA at 200 yards and there was a little chicken hanging. Shot, dinged down the first shot. We move out to 330 yards because the range doesn't have a target at 300 yards. Unfortunately, they have it at 330 yards. So at 330 yards, I went up four MOA. First shot on this human target, smack dab in the center. Now we go up to 425 yards. And again, I don't plan on hunting beyond 350 yards, but I still want to see how capable this rifle is. So I adjusted my scope to six MOA. I shot and it hit low. I figured that might've just been me. So I shot again at six MOA and it hit low once again. So knowing that my velocity might be off because I haven't chronoed my rifle, I readjusted my scope to seven MOA and for a little bit of context, it's 98 degrees out. My barrel is hot because we just shot five times in a row. I have one bullet left in this box of ammo and I sent it down with a hot barrel, no wind, and pretty much center, if you will, at that target at 420 yards. So when you consider all the factors, this rifle is just a shooter. So in conclusion, I genuinely think this is one of the best value rifle setups that you can buy right now. $600 CVA Cascade rifle, $500 Vortex Viper HS 40 16x44 rifle scope. So it's about $1,100 total. And I can ramble on and on and on about this rifle, but let's be honest, results speak louder than words. You guys saw me shoot five different boxes of ammo with it. You guys saw me zero my rifle and you guys saw me shoot out to 420 yards with this rifle. So with that said, I appreciate you watching. If you have questions, leave a comment. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. But for now, we got other things to worry about. Thanks for watching.